good morning. Good morning. All right. It is wonderful to be here. Welcome. In this time of uncertainty, with so many things going on, this is a place of refuge where we can be certain of the love of our God and King. And this is our time to gather together and remember all those things we have to be thankful for. As the song was just playing, you know, he has made me glad, so I will rejoice. I invite all who can to please stand, but let us all join together in worship of our God and our King. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, send us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me We welcome you this morning to our service. We are glad you're here. This afternoon, I believe this service will be on at 1 o'clock if you'd like to watch it again. <laughs> now, if it's good once, it's great twice. But we welcome you. We're glad that you're here to worship. It's going to be a great day. As we have baptism, celebrating the gift of God's life unto us, and being reminded that in the midst of everything, God gives life to say, Life's going to go on. So welcome. Would you join me in the saying and stating our Apostles' Creed as we stand together in worship this morning? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Great to worship this morning. We'll figure out these masks by the time it's to stop wearing them. So I think I'm fixed. I have a couple of announcements to call your attention to this morning. One is if you have not returned your pledge card, we encourage you to do so. There's some in the back, or you can go online at on the menu, click menu, and you'll find our pledge card for 2021. It's a great time for us to let God show off, show up, show off, and show us the greatness and glandor as we give of what God's given to us. To also remind you, did you know that things have changed? Do you all know that things have changed? All right, all right. Well, guess what? Advent's going to be different. Everything you've ever known about Advent will probably be in different form or fashion. But we're going to be doing things. Sunday, November the 29th, we anticipate that we'll be returning to Sunday school, but we're not sure how that'll look. We anticipate that afternoon that we're going to have a drive through Advent time for the whole church. So everything will be different. Pay attention to the website. That's the place to gain some information. Stay up to date. The midweek United time that we have on 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. We encourage you to do that or just call in the old-fashioned way and ask us what's going on. But we're really grateful that we, have, we are able to be creative in these unusual days. And we thank all of you for every effort. We come today to pray. Probably a never more needed time for us to gather and pray. 
We've seen a week. And we'll see many more. But there's the good news of the gospel that regardless of what we've seen, we know who holds tomorrow. So we pray unto the Lord Almighty. We remember this morning the family of Judy Talbert. Her funeral was yesterday. We remember her her family and her prayers. We remember many others who are sick, struggling. You know those. We give thanks to God. In the midst of the storm, we're on a steady boat. May we pray together. God, thank you, and we give you praise for always being with us. Thank you for your power and your splendid. You are magnificent, all-powerful, all glory is given unto you. Let us not ever imagine that principalities nor things present nor things to come will ever separate us from your love. We thank you as a people of God that we can come together. And we pray in our worship that we come together and in our living together we come together that we're united to be a people who love you with all of our heart and each other with all of our hearts. We pray today for our church. We pray for those in our church who know sorrow and sadness. We pray for those who have sickness and illness in their families. We pray for every family. We pray for every parent. We pray for those who have parents who are older. Lord, you know there are so many that stand in the need of prayer. Help us. For those addicted, for those who feel left out, for those who are lonely, let us be the hand and the joy of Christ. Bless Pastor Glenn as he preaches this morning. Thank you that you've given him a word to share with us that will call us to be alert and awake to what you're doing in our lives and in the world. Draw us unto you. Hold us in your hands. May we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Let's not stand. Let's don't sing. I, I hope that was a good recovery. Please register your attendance <laughs> and be grateful as we hear Stacy sing one of the great hymns of all the faith. Oh. 
adjusted. I'm going to invite Andrew and Bethany Sneed to come bring their daughter Mary Lane and the other daughters that want to come or any other family members that want to come. The church is never more the church than it is in a moment like this that we acknowledge that all of us, y'all come over this way, that all of us are simply the children of God. What a great promise Stacy has sung for this family at this moment, that God's watching and protection is ever before us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is a gift of God given to us without price. So I ask to you as parents and to you as family and the greater family, do you in presenting Mary Lane Rutland for holy baptism confess your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If you do, say we do. Mm-hmm. Will you nurture her in Christ's holy church so that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, to give attendance to the public worship of God, and to be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's Holy Church. If you will, say we will. will. The 
waters of baptism poured out for the world. Here we go. Thank you. Now, Miss Mary Lane, you went to sleep before I started preaching. <laughs> what name is given to this child? Mary Lane Rutland Mead. Okay. With these waters of baptism, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and under the sign of the cross, Mary Lane Rutland, my sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless your life. I present to you the newest member of the family of God, Mary Lane Rutland. And I ask every one of you, will you do your part? We take these vows as a church. Will you do everything in your power to help Mary Lane as she grows in faith and love and hope and grace so that one day she will for herself say, I have seen what it means to follow Jesus and I want to do that as well. If you will, would you say, I will. I will. Harold, are you around? How about a little bit of Jesus loves me? You can sing or you can just enjoy it. we've been able to watch this family as it has grown see Miss Harrison and Miss Francis Franny is what I was wanting to say but it's Francis we've watched them and now we see a new part of this family Eliza from our children's ministry and family ministry Let's pray together. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, grant that Mary Lane, as she grows in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Guide and uphold her parents and grandparents and all other members of her family so that they may guide her to accept God's grace for herself so that then she will walk in a life of faith whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I just want to be right here for just a second. I'm going to say This morning, these two big sisters came in and immediately began to tell me that this was Little Sister's Day. Y'all are precious. Aren't we blessed already? I was worried about preaching after Stacy sang. Now I'm worried about preaching after this. I may not give her up, okay? <laughs> I'm going to let you have that. I'm going to give her back. Thank y'all so much. Miss Branny.
Miss Harrison, Miss Mary Lane. Bless y'all. You know, sometimes the tears in our heart get to the corner of our eyes before we realize they should. I don't have a changer, y'all. I'm not sure exactly why. Bill's going to find one. So if we get slides, we're going to be okay. If we don't, we're going to be okay. They know how to move them up that direction. Okay. <laughs> Bill, we're just all out of sync. If you have children to go to children's church, Miss Jamie's in the back. We have any children headed to children's church? She's going to take them with you, with her as they go. There's a few of them coming around there to that. As they head on their way, would you join with me? Let's just extend a hand and offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for these boys and girls and for the ones who will lead them today. May they come to know the great joy of Jesus as the one who loves them most. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So glad to have everyone here. You know, everybody that reads the scripture finds out sooner or later that Jesus had this thing about weddings. He told parables about weddings often. He used the parables, the stories of weddings to help get bigger points across. Now, one of those things that we have to remember in all of that is that a parable is not a real story. It's not something that actually happened, but it's a story to teach us something. And so Jesus, in this Gospel of Matthew, gives us a story about a wedding. He says it this way. Matthew remembers it for us. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. And when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were, went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with them into the wedding feast, and the door was shut. And later the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore. Keep awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can you imagine a wedding like that? I want us to think a little bit about it. If you would change for me there, Amanda. This is Amanda. <laughs> She's right up there today, but this is her wedding recently. I believe it's been about a month now or a month and so. We do things and we like weddings. We all love to see a beautiful bride. And, and here's Amanda and she's being escorted by her, her father, uh, Judge Billy Bale. And most girls, I think, grow up dreaming of this, this day. What's it going to be like? What's a wedding going to be like? What's it going to look like? What is my dress going to be like? Now, we get to do a lot of weddings around here, and, and we see the good of weddings, and sometimes we see the difficult of weddings because there's a, whole, there's a whole way of doing things that has sprung up about weddings. More weddings are being done away from church than in church now, and, and there's a lot of fall to raw about, about weddings. You know, There's a lot of getting ready for weddings. You got to do this, and you got to do that, and there are people, there's a whole industry built up around that now. But there's also more about weddings that we need to see, if you would change. Now, this is a different wedding. I want you to notice something in this picture. This is Graham and Anna, my son and daughter-in-law. And that's her dad, the Baptist preacher, walking her down the aisle. And I want you to notice, how many people are looking at the groom? None. 
I always tell the bridesmaids as they're coming in, I say, if, if you're walking too fast, just look at me because nobody's looking up there at the front. I'll tell you to slow down. And I do. I put my hand up and tell folks to slow down. They tend to want to run, and, and they don't need to do that. But you notice Graham has got this big smile on his face, and he's waiting up there, and nobody cares. Nobody's paying any attention to the groom. But there's something about it. I want you to notice that in Jesus' story, ah, Bill has found the changer. Hand off. Thank you, Bill. That may be the only thing you and I hand off right all day today. In this story, Jesus says it's different than it is now. In this wedding, Jesus is telling the story and he says, but nobody was really paying that much attention to the bridesmaids. They were paying attention for the groom, waiting on the groom because the groom would decide when the wedding took place. All of you young ladies and all of you mamas and grandmamas, can you imagine that? I mean, Andrew, can you imagine if you had walked into Donnie and said, guess what, Donnie and Bethany, uh, I'm going to decide when this wedding's going to take place. And I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. And everybody, y'all just stay ready for a month or so. And I'll get to you. We wouldn't have had a dad today here. <laughs> but in Jesus' story, he's telling it that way. Everyone is waiting on the groom. And, and it's a celebration. Now, we, we have to understand that Jesus sometimes uses this wedding analogy in different ways. But for this telling of the story, it's about a celebration. This is such a good thing that's going to happen, this kingdom of God, that it's worth staying ready to enter. He's reminding them that it's not something to dread or fear, but it's something that's wonderful. And the, the difference would be that, Bill, you didn't turn it on. Okay, let's try. Still not moving. Amanda, would you? There we go. This is Bill in a younger day. <laughs> now, really, this is John the Baptist in someone's mind. Bill the Baptist. But John the Baptist, you remember when he talked about the coming of the kingdom, when he talked about Jesus coming into the world, he was not a happy man. He was an Essene, a very, very different group of people down by the Dead Sea. And John the Baptist said, now, when this kingdom comes, it's going to be... It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. You better get ready. As a matter of fact, he called the religious folks. He said, you brood of vipers. God's not going to be pleased with you, so you need to get prepared because the tough stuff is coming. But that's not what Jesus said about it. If you would brood. Jesus had a different way of looking at it. Jesus said the wedding is this celebration. And he said, keep oil in your lamps. Now, you have to remember in the scripture, there were two things that stood for joy. One was oil and the other one was wine. Now, we understand wine making people happy. But, I mean, it was that, those were the two images. If you had plenty of oil or you had plenty of wine, your life was to be filled with joy. That's the way they looked at it. As a matter of fact, at Cana of Galilee, Jesus goes, you remember, and they run out of wine. And they're saying to him, there's nobody happy anymore. And Jesus says, well, I can handle this. I'll give you, I'll take care of this wine issue for you. But what you're really looking forward is the joy, for is the joy. The same thing in this, as the disciples and everyone is listening in, Jesus is telling them that the kingdom is like this. If you're not careful, if you're not prepared, you will run out of oil, you'll run out of joy in life. And when you do that, you have to replenish your stock. But you can't replenish your stock at midnight when there's no one able to give it to you. Now, I'm just going to ask. This has been a, a, a tumultuous week, it's my way of saying. It's been a, a difficult week in the life of our country. And a lot of people, some people are just thrilled. And some people are just unhappy. But in the midst of it, have you felt like your oil was running low? Have you felt like there was something missing in your life? I, I have. I've struggled. Where are we going to get this? And we're not going to get it at, at midnight or 2 o'clock in the morning. We're going to get it from God. So maybe this is the word of God for us today. Keep your lamps burning. Keep the oil coming. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning, burning. 
keep me burning till the break of day. Don't tell me how many pitches I used in that, okay? But we begin to understand that Jesus is saying, stay ready, stay prepared. Because you never know when you're going to see the goodness of God. You never know when you're going to see the presence of Christ in the midst of your everyday life. So stay awake. If you'll move to the next slide. This is Dan and Ann Clough. They are on the other side of the church, the, in the traditional side. And I, I picked their picture simply because I could find it. And I know that some of you may be 50 plus years in marriage or 60 plus years in marriage. And I believe they're 50 plus. But they put this thing up recently about how much they had loved each other all through the years. You see, what Jesus is saying is this kingdom is going to come like a wedding, but it's not just, not just that marriage ceremony. But the kingdom of God is an ongoing thing. A lot of people think the, the thing about a marriage is we're going to get married and that's the end of it. <laughs> That's when everything changes. But what Jesus is saying, it, this relationship with him is like a marriage that goes on and on and on. And it will continue seeing the celebration day by day. Sometimes it takes these folks that have been married a long time to look at us and go, hey, you can do it. Keep awake. Keep looking. Keep able to see. As we do those kind of things, remember, we made a promise this morning. We took Mary Lane and we held her and we took her out into the congregation and you represented the whole family of God, not just here in Huntsville, but the whole world. And you took that child and you said, we're going to live a life that is expectant to see Jesus every day. We're expectant to look and know the goodness of God in every day that goes on. What a beautiful family. What a beautiful promise it is to remind all of us what it's like to stay prepared. Now, again, we're headed into Advent in a couple of weeks, and we're going to hear from Brother John the Baptist again. And he's going to say things are going to be tough. But Jesus says, in the midst of the tough, look for the good. See it. I want us to continue to try to find those ways how do we stay prepared? Seek fresh oil every day. Be renewed in your spirit every day. Pray for kingdom eyes. Have you ever seen someone that really had it good in life and you wouldn't know it because they had the mully grubs all the time? I mean, just a, a grumpy person all the time and you go, why are you so grumpy? Things are good. See what God has done for you. Sometimes I think we are blinded. We blind ourselves to the goodness of God. Charge into difficult times with expectation. You know, right now it's a difficult time in our country in some ways, but I'm ready for us to charge into something. I'm ready for us to charge into something with an expectation that God has not turned his back on us. That matter of fact, God is calling us as the church family, the faith family, to stand up and be counted again. And say that regardless of what happens with politics, I'm still going to love my neighbor and I'm going to love God with all that I have. Regardless. And finally, remember what God has done. We are so tempted these days to have short memories. Short memories of what God has done in our lives. What God has brought us through. You know, I look at y'all this morning and I, my heart's just rejoicing because though we're not anywhere near what it was before we shut down for COVID, it's nice to see some faces behind masks out there today. I can't tell if you're sticking your tongues out or not, so it's a good day. But ultimately, it reminds us there were a lot of decisions made in the last week. A lot of decisions. And the Old Testament, Joshua, was at a turning point with God's people. And he said, now you choose today who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. I think that's what Jesus was saying to his disciples in a story about a wedding where the groom was going to come and some were prepared and some weren't prepared, he was saying to them, you're going to have a lot of choices in your life every day. Now you can choose to look for the kingdom and see Jesus. 
Or you can choose to go another direction. You can serve God and see the goodness of God, or you can serve this world and see only things that will bring you down. But in the midst of it, he says, it's not an option. <laughs> it's always amazed me that Jesus doesn't throw out options for us. He doesn't say, now this is something I want you to consider. Jesus says to all of those that are listening, now the kingdom of heaven is like this. He didn't say it might be like this or I hope it's going to be like this. He said the kingdom of heaven is like this. There was a wedding and there were some people who foolishly were not ready. Stay prepared because the bridegroom is going to come and invite you to see that wedding and be in that wedding and participate in that wedding that we call the kingdom of God and you don't want to miss it. Now we all know, all of us who have children, that Bethany and Andrew, they've got a tiny baby and two beautiful other daughters. And that's tough. That's tough. That's hard work. I don't care who you are, that's hard work. And they've got loving family all around them and that's wonderful. But they have to make that choice and they did today. They have to make that choice that they're either going to see the goodness in the kingdom of God and look for that or they're going to do something else and thank God they came in today and said this is our choice. And it's almost as if little Mary Lane would say to us, now you get to choose, but for me and my family, we're going to follow the Lord. Well, who are you going to follow? That answer's pretty easy to make, I think. Let's just do it. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, how good it is. We give you thanks. We give you thanks that you put in our midst this morning. Signs and symbols that the kingdom is all around us. It's not something we have to wait to see, but we get to see your goodness in this day. So Lord, I pray for every one of us here right now that again, after coming through all that our country has come through, after coming through and still being a part of a pandemic, that you would give us that option again this morning to choose to follow you. Give us courage to say that we're going to bring something different today. And that difference is all about a kingdom that's like a wedding that's going to happen. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing our closing song this morning, I invite you to make those internal commitments and say, this is a place, this is a day that I'll choose again. Maybe you're sitting here and you've never said, I want to follow Jesus. I want to make that as easy as I can this morning. No pressure. And just say, if you want to make that commitment, please step forward. We'll celebrate with you. If you're looking for a church home, we invite you. If you want to be a part of this church family, we invite you to become a part. We'll receive you. But for every one of us, this is a chance for us to say, I'm going to choose the kingdom. Let's stand. Let's sing together. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day.
not too sure. My friends in Christ, my sisters and brothers in Christ, a sign in our midst of the kingdom of heaven, a sign in our midst that God has not departed from us. And yet God says, go change this world so that every child will love, be loved. Change this world world so that every child will know that they have a place. Mary Lane says to us, go serve the Lord. Go serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now I'm supposed to tell y'all how to go out. Front and back rows first and then we just alternate in as much as and can. And don't forget to put your offering, Bill says, in the basket here in the back. <laughs> Bless you.